Why, hello there, and good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Trading here. I'm going to dive into today's masterclass. I see you. What's up, Sean? Uh, clicking over to chess as to what seasonal coffee I'm drinking right now. That's the question for the day. Um, but more importantly, we're going to be doing some typography and lettering and honestly, just like a bunch of pro tips. I'm going to throw a lot at you as the plan. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Um, thank you, Michelle. Good to see you. Audio and video is good. Got the thumbs up from the, my um, unofficial tech person, which is awesome. Uh, and we're going to dive into uh, all we have to offer when it comes to uh, mainly Illustrator. Uh, but we could talk about all the apps when it comes to... Viola, you know I'm gonna say that. So yeah, it's not bacon coffee, it's pumpkin spice. Deal with it. You know what's gonna happen. Fall flavors are my favorite flavors. Cinnamon and nutmeg and cardamom and all that stuff. You grind up a spice cabinet and put it in a drink and yeah, I'll drink it. So, all right. Um, uh, let's do this. Uh, Let's do this. All right, let's just kind of jump in. We're gonna deal with typography and um, we can get into some lettering and ultimately um, just what we can do with fonts and everything. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, and we're gonna make some great art. That's right. New kill it, killing the game. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, yeah, real fast. I'm gonna kind of set this up by the way. So this is just like a little file I have that uh, I want to get rocking really fast and uh, I'm probably gonna make this like 19 uh, 1920 by 1080 is what I'm thinking actually I'm not hundred percent sure if that's a preset down here but I usually just type it in so again just kind of getting this set up uh, 1920 by 1080 which will be good for our viewing experience today and sure enough, what do we have? A bunch of phrases right here. Just hello in English and other languages. So, so many Braswells in the house. Cheers to everybody. Uh, let me launch, get chat squared away if you're joining me elsewhere as well. Um, yeah, I just love to, to see people and uh, talk to you guys. Because it's been so crazy lately. Um, just with uh, Adobe Max and all just like all the prep that's uh, going into that so um, yeah that's kind of what we're all dealing with um, so yeah that's all that's all you need to know <laughs> all right hello there cool Stoney's in the house Tiago what's up uh, all right, Tiago, you're too kind to me. Um, and again, I wanna make this worthwhile for you guys. First thing I typically do with text in, in Illustrator is I will um, uh, like get it set up right. Cause oftentimes I use um, like a, a, like you might have a specific font you wanna use. I have Source Sans Pro, um, but it could be anything, right? You just wanna change it from Myriad. You can keep it Myriad, right? because that's your sort of like default font. Okay, but find a font that you like, right? That you enjoy, that you find pleasure in. Maybe it's um, <clears throat> Giddy Up. Do I have Giddy Up? If there's ever this issue where you're looking for a font, you're like, you swear you have it. Just make sure you have your classifications cleared. Uh, gosh, I don't have Giddy Up font. I'm so, I'm so bummed. Uh, you know, you know, we could pick on Comic Sans all we want. But really, ultimately, you get to get the font you want. I like uh, Source Sans Pro. Actually, I might even change it from that because I want a variable. Oh, I like the um, variable concept fonts. So these fonts right in here have these little scroll bars, right? Weight, width, slant, right? So we can jump in and say, hey, you know, I want a really thick font right, really big or really teeny with as much slant as we want. And it's actually shuffling through a bunch of different fonts, just so you know. Stoney's working and lurking. Oh yeah, I like it. Okay, so. Let's change this. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, there we go. Stoney, just like so. There we go, we have our text. We have the 
text that I actually always want. Um, so if every time I start up um, Photoshop, I want it to have this font, that's ultimately what I want to do. I'm going to put this in my start file. Let's go to characters. We have our characters right here. We have our character styles right in here. Okay, and this is probably the most important one. Just so you know, like, these panels are pretty darn similar. Basically, if I click right here, these two panels are the exact same. So I never have this character panel open, typically. But there we go. Stony, good morning, good morning, everybody. There we are. So maybe I like this font. Uh, or I want to have something more drastic. I really like this one though. Uh, we could replace it. Let's try this. Let's see if I just, let's see what happens. Nope. I'm just trying out some things. Okay. Uh, let's just, let's actually deselect this text, but basically I want acumen variable concept to be my default font. Just double click on it basic character formats this is where you change that that's all so if you're always using a certain font change it boom and now that's going to be the font that i use when i typically start something new you get the idea let's see what else we got in here everything else is pretty straightforward okay Um, so typically I'll save this. This will be my start file. Um, and I would get this squared away and, um, I would. Save this to my desktop. Right. And, uh, put that in my new document profiles right in here. Right, so that's what I would do. Boom, there we go. Start file. So now if I put it in here, your new document profiles, every time I start up Illustrator, it will be right in here. Now you do have to actually like restart, did I say Photoshop? Restart Illustrator. Um, you have to restart it, but it will appear in here. So now you know, all right, cool. Good morning, everybody. A little more like, hello. And let's just have some fun with some type, okay? And we could go with just, again, a simple hello. Okay, I, that's what I have back here. Hey, hello, hi. We wanna do some fun things with all of this text, okay? And we don't wanna have to, you know, break it apart if we can help it. So that's the goal for today, is keep the text editable, right? While changing it up and making a nice layout. So that's the goal. Uh, let's have some fun. Here's another one since I was talking about uh, variable uh, fonts. This one, as you may have seen me use in the past, it's called Climate Crisis. So it says 1979. Oh yeah, these are the polar ice caps 1979 and then as we go along it's like oh no it's melting it's melting by 2050 look at these sad um uh, icebergs or polar ice caps how they're just melting away so that's a really cool and very very uh i don't know what's the word i'm looking for environmentalist type approach and i just actually just really like this font so I'm into it. So let's take a look. Since we're talking about variable fonts, uh, is it called V fonts? Oh, you guys are not supposed to see that. Uh, very, I think it's V fonts. I don't remember. Variable fonts. Oh yeah, I was right. It's called V fonts. Jump out here. And uh, this is the place where you can find a bunch of variable fonts. And actually some really, oh yeah, totally into this one. So you, this one you could pump up, ready? 
we'll pump up this funky rounded one. Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Oh yeah, it gets crazy, but I'm totally into it. So yeah, some are free, some aren't, just so you know, but um, all are very cool. Totally into it. And by the way, right here, this is where it shows the publisher and the licensing that you that they have for it. So again, super fun. Uh, this one as well, right? Sort of adjusting the thickness of those inner lines, the weight, the slant. You get the idea. Let's take a look at this one with the shadow. Again, this one has a trial, so I could go ahead and use it. But yeah, I'm not going to. Anyways, don't mind, as, don't mind me as I kind of scroll down and take a look at some of these uh, that might be pretty useful. I like this one because this is a slab serif. I don't have a slab serif that's a variable type font. And I typically like variable fonts because again, it gives me all this control specifically in here for the weight, but I like as many controls, obviously, as I can get. And guess what? Uh, there's a trial there as well. So we could just jump out and you get the idea. All right, cool. There it is. Try it out and go through that process. But you guys don't need to see me go through this process, right? So this is where I check out, you know, and log in and all that stuff. So anyways, let's move on. We have our fun hay. I want all of this to be playful. This needs to be like, it needs to have a playful experience with it overall. Each one of these, right? So this hay, and each one's gonna be different sizes and it, we want this all to lock together. So, um, yeah, I could totally like use everybody's help in, um, uh, in, you know, sort of the word hello in different languages. I tried to capture that as much as possible. Okay, but I could probably use some help. Okay, so we know this word, hey, when you say, hey, ah, that's gonna be very playful, which is why I like this Climate Crisis font. Even though it's called Climate Crisis, right? I could still go with something more fun, right? Like this one, hey, right? And that almost makes it look like it should say H-A-Y as if it's like, hey, uh, on a farm or something. So let's go through some script fonts. Um, sometimes this view gets a little tight, especially when you're streaming. Right up here, we have the same options. This might be actually easier for all of us to see. Oh, I really like this one. Boom, boom, added script. For any script-based font, I also double check and just see if there are any alternates, right? There might be alternates for certain characters, especially again, when, when it comes to script-based fonts. That hey is okay. Ooh, this uh, Boucherie cursive. Oh yeah, so Boucherie cursive, like I was mentioning. Go down in here. Oh yeah, there's an additional uh, Y, some alternate glyphs right in here. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I don't know, I'm open to your, uh, your thoughts. Uh, oh. Oh, thank you so much. Umicorn. Uh, uh, Sawasti, am I saying that right? Because again, I've been to Thailand and now you're bringing back some memories. But yeah, let's paste that in there. Uh, so, Sawasti, I, I don't, Sawasti, I hope I'm saying that right. There we have, hey, hey, what's up? Right? That's the idea. I might want to thicken this up. Oh, yeah, thank you. H-E-J. Copying this as well. Yeah, oh yeah, I actually have it right here as well. So, good, good. We're on our way. Just trying some different styles really fast. Hucklebuck. All right, let's get down to it. Ooh, this one, Hucklebuck. I decided that this text, I want to actually have this font on it. Hit I. I will sample and bam, there we go. Sample all those properties. 
And if you're curious everything that's been sampled, you can double click on the eyedropper tool and this has everything that you can sample from one to the next. So if you ever decide that maybe, you know what, you don't want the character style uh, or anything, you maybe want other properties, you can control that right in there. So we'll just do howdy in that font, that works. I'll probably do this all on a different color as well. Oh yeah, I love hand lettered fonts too. And I think that would be great by the way, Cody, because what is hello? When you say hello or hi, or even the word hi, it's very much, very like personal or personable. So maybe I do do some hand lettering and that's like a great idea by the way. So maybe that's what I do with like, hello. Okay. Anyway, let's get to work. We have this. We'll use a uh, sample this one. That will be our hello. And we'll work on locking these up. Checking for alternate glyphs. We can also open up the alternate glyphs panel under type. Clear down here, glyphs, bingo. Right, and we can see all the characters for this particular font. And see if there's any fun ones or if any ones just look good. Right, there might be some surprises in here as well. Like, I don't know what this is. Jukebox. That might, I don't know what that's all about. That's funny. Okay, so. Let's work on this. Shrink it into place. Kind of want to throw a color down behind this. And maybe I'm getting too tied up. I might be getting too kind of like, I don't know, just like locked up in the color, but I, I want to have some different color rather than staring at a white screen. So we'll do something like this. Blue is very calming. It's everybody's favorite color, right? So this works well. Now we can select all this text, right? And we'll work on the color, but maybe we'll work on this in white. White text looks better. All right, and we're gonna add some, uh, oh, thank you, hola, sorry, let me, um, I gotta, oh man, you guys are bringing back so many memories. Let me make sure I have hola. I do not. Everybody's so smart, look at you guys. Ju <laughs> Rick H, you win. <laughs> Jukebox is how they said hello in the 50s. You're killing me. Just trying to capture this. Those alternate glyphs get to be pretty important uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, adding any sort of hyphens or special characters for a specific uh, letter. Do the bomb. Ah, I love all these words, man. I got a, ah, too much to capture. So sorry. I thought I did all my research. Maybe I have that in here. I tried to grab as many as I could. But also let's try to have this go as fast as possible. Salute. There we go. This is gonna get fun. Let's make it happen. We got a lot of work to do. Salute, it's gonna be more like that. I just decided, hola. Hola is the most friendly way almost that you could say hello. So we'll go back to our script-based fonts. Hola, perfect. Right, drop that in there. Buy one knee. So again, very unique. So I can consider going into maybe some more decorative fonts, right? So right in here, switch to decorative. Um, yeah. Bawoni. Let's adjust the, the spacing right in here. So you might be familiar with doing this. You could select that space like so, 
and use shortcut keys. I typically will use, hold down the option key and then press the um, left arrow, right? And we can tighten up that space right in here. Same thing. Option command will adjust it by tens. So it goes 10 pixels, 20 pixels. We can tighten that up like that, <clears throat> right? We could have some fun with this text as well, as you could imagine. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Alexander, for that. Good call. You can manage all of that through, uh, yeah, your Creative Cloud app. Right up here, you're going to have a couple different selections. Make with warp, make with mesh. I don't know if you guys are used to using it this way. This is one way to do it. Right, this envelope feature, bam, we can click that. We'll do like a, a flag. I don't know why I like flag, but there we go. We have sort of the flag bending of that text, right? It typically wraps it, right? So we can edit the envelope or edit the content. So if we do want to jump in and tighten that up, that's how we do that. And again, jump back out, you get the idea. Okay. Go in here, we're gonna make this thin and thin. Oh yeah. This needs to be like Futura. Ooh, maybe this one, maybe Impact. I think we need something very angular. And uh, let's say for this one, we decide we want to give it an outline. Do I have Aloha on the list? I do not. Aloha. So much to do. All right, and as Alexander was saying, we can go ahead and manage our fonts as well. Man, there's so many things I need to do right now. We'll clean this text up, but let's say for instance, uh, I want something extra, like something really unique for Guten Tag, right? Go up here. Actually, I don't know if I've done this. Here we go, boom. Uh, Guten Tag is selected. Zoom over. There it is. Right here. Why is it not giving me? I don't know why it's still. S Ooh, that was a fun one. That's good for Aloha. You guys starting to see how big of a project this is? I'm starting to realizing it myself. Such a big project, I'm just realizing. All right. Uh. Cool. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, we could jump out, we could click find more right here. So what's happening here is it's actually going out to Creative Cloud, the Adobe fonts, and should start filtering out all the Adobe fonts. These are not on my desktop, right? But it gives me all of these script fonts out on Adobe Cloud, uh, out on Creative Cloud. So let's find something fun. We still need to make it very legible. I might go with Alpine script regular. Oh, it looks like I already have it actually, which is interesting. Uh, 
Yeah, let's just go with Alicia regular right over here. We can go ahead and activate it, right? So it's going to activate it. And uh, yeah, can't be any easier than that, buddy. Hey, you know what? I'm not going to just restrict this to um, Illustrator. We can also talk about what we could do in Photoshop. I'll open it up really fast. And um, also, ooh, that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, let's do this really fast. Let's open up this. And say, for instance, you're out in the, you're out in the wild, or I don't know, you're on the internet. You find a cool font that you like, right? Maybe it's off an old sign or in some flattened image. Right, we could figure out what that font is uh, using Photoshop. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this text right here, Blackjack, because I'm like, hey, I like this font. I would like to figure out what it is. Uh, go up to Type, and again, I'm in Photoshop. We have Match Font, so I can select Match Font. It'll use Creative Cloud, go through those 14,000 fonts, and sure enough, like return its best guess. Again, it's searching 14,000 fonts. Adobe doesn't own all the fonts in the world, okay? So it might not serve up that exact one, but at least something close. This Cuesta actually seems very close. Um, so does Bodoni, by the way. So just like, kind of like we did in, in Illustrator a second ago, hey, it found this font. Yeah, just go ahead and activate it, right? I just activated Bodoni, right? That's done, boom. And then I could use that in my project. In this one, for instance, um, you know, use it wherever. But what, what's cool about this, hold on, I'm so sorry. As soon as you select it, when you go into match font, whichever one you select in this menu, it stores in the cache. So it's like, oh, I decided uh, Libadonal is better. We'll click OK. So when I go to click and type new font it gives me that font right so that's what's happening but there you go we found the uh something co close to blackjack jack has anybody ever had blackjack gum because what i understand is this is a uh Anybody ever have blackjack gum? I might have, maybe. At least I'm aware of it. So basic structures there. Obviously this needs to be scrunched up a lot, but again, we're closer to sort of what that um, was. Yeah, anybody, you never heard of blackjack gum? This is a different way of asking how old you are. But is anybody aware of blackjack gum? All right, so uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I should launch it, but also um, Capture should have the same capability unless I'm thinking of a different app. Uh, so, you guys get it. All right. All right, Frank had issues with his Behance. Frank's here now, everybody, so we can begin. So blackjack, blackjack gum is black licorice flavored gum, basically. It has that star anise flavor. That's blackjack gum. Now you know. Now you know, my friends. Toodle bomb. Isn't that fun? We get to play with fonts today and manipulate this content, right? Like, uh, maybe what? Mm, this one might be kind of tricky. But let's just take this text here. And I'm thinking, okay, it would be cool. I'm gonna have text that's black, that's white, maybe some that have a con uh, sort of a combo. Yes, thank you, Tim. Capture can also do this as well. Cool. Jan Eric, you love black licorice specifically? All right, so what, what we can do is we can go ahead and outline it, right? We might want uh, this thicker. We can, ooh, it does have all these thick. Oh, 
awesome thick fonts like so okay that's actually pretty cool um let's say we wanted to do this a couple times like what if we wanted like three different strokes we have our black stroke here just open up our appearance panel right in here right we can add a new stroke i'm just going to change the color for us so changing that this is a one point stroke and what this does if you take a look And I get it. I feel like Illustrator has way too many panels going on. It's like, come on now. Why you got so, why you got so many panels going on? This is my initial f uh, stroke. Oh, so sorry. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let's get this little... There we go. So there is a, why am I not, this is always, this is, this is a little bit tricky. Let's just roll it back or not. Anyway, so the initial font, the initial stroke is, uh, oh man. We could reset this back to the default. We'll just get rid of that one. Let's try this one more time. Um, so, so it does kind of hide your initial stroke. So what you can do is if you did want to add multiple strokes, I would do that all in your appearance panel and I would do it all right down here. So right in here, boom, add a stroke. There it is. We'll increase this maybe uh, threefold. We'll add another stroke on top of that one. This one is going to be pink. Right, and we'll take this one down a couple notches, right? And now we have sort of that double stroke that uh, is what I was going for. So you get the idea. Cool. I kind of like that pink. Uh, clever Devin, uh, Salum, Salumaki. What what language is that? Uh, oh, Jan Eric likes black licorice. Well, cool. <laughs> Hit the I key. We can go ahead. Oh, it's going to sample the font. It's not going to get everything in here. Because remember, if we sample something, um, it will get the, the fill, the color, but it's not going to get all of the appearance, right? Even if you go in and check these boxes, you can say, hey, you know what, just grab everything, right? It's still not quite going to um, grab all those properties. Like, ooh, yes, it did. Oh, I'm writing that down. This is the thing, double click on this. Check this out. The appearance there we go, checking that. Now it's actually gonna sample everything from that previous font, which is again, really cool. Uh, into it. Let's take this, for this one I kinda wanna make it a little bit thicker, but um, yeah, I don't know. All right, we got that. It's mixing up the style a little bit, ultimately I would not do that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Bobby, it, it, who's with me? Hey, do you guys want to hear something else that I just discovered the other day? Right? I'm like, okay, I want to do this word, hey. I just discovered the other day, I do brushes all the time and look at my amazing brush library. I'm so proud of it. Right? So a lot of times you'll have a brush and maybe we want to add a nice underline to this. Or maybe we want to apply it to this text. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Right? So it's like, yeah, you have uh, this line, for instance, that happens to be this branch or this one or this one. And you're like, hey, I don't have the original file, right? I just discovered, and tell me if you guys knew this because now I'm going to feel like, like I'm losing my mind. You could actually grab this, click and drag it out and drop it onto your, uh, into your file, 
And now these are all the components that make up this particular brush right here, right? Because you notice if you double click, you can't edit these strokes. Like the original file, you're like, where is it? If you click and drag it on, these are all the components. Double click, we could see here's the corner, right? Here's the end, here's, here, excuse me, here's I guess what I'm calling, I call it the top of the branch, here's the roots, okay? And uh, those happen to be uh, right in here and those are actually swatches. So thank you, Michelle did not know that, so it's a win for me. Oh yeah, it is an impressive brush library. By the way, if you guys are going to Max, like attend my Illustrator session because I'm gonna be giving you like all this stuff. So I'm, I'm mad deep in the process of uh, compiling all that and giving you a ton of free things, okay? So now you know. You could do the same thing for uh, graphic styles, I think. Let's see if you could do that for graphic styles. You cannot. Okay, but speaking of graphic styles, if I happen to be using the same style over and over, maybe I do want to make it a graphic style. So right down here, we can go ahead and click, add it, there it is, right? So now we have that stored. We can go to Guten Tag, Shabam, there it is. There's Guten Tag, uh, applying that. Now, it does not have a fill on it. There we go. Doesn't make it look that cool, right? We wanna maybe take this to the next level. Um, I can use additional graphic styles. So these, that's why I like have these two stacked up. All the this appearance craziness can roll into these graphic styles. So if I decide I wanna do this style, right? Uh, what other cool ones do I have? This one, that's fun. And then this one kind of has this blurry look to it. But what's cool about these graphic styles is um, your fills and your strokes can have effects on them. So this has a radial blur, as you can tell, right? That we can also modify. So uh, yeah, think about taking advantage of that. I think that's really cool. And by the way, this is all still vector, which is awesome. All right, Murray, awesome. So glad to hear you guys gotta join me for my session because you know I'm like working really hard on it. So please join me for my Mac session and all the stuff, okay? So yeah, there's a lot going on. And uh, I think we're all working like mad on these uh, Max sessions. So yeah, I'm not the only one. We're all just slaving away here in the best way possible, because again, it's still super fun, right? Just like with any other design you work on, you do, you might have the tendency to over-design. I think for this, we just want to have a couple elements. I don't even think these colors are working. Can we agree, Afroja? We want to agree, yes. It's not quite working. So again, select this. We want to take this back to its default. We can click right here. And sure enough, we could clear the appearance or reduce to basic appearance. Clearing obviously clears it out. Let's undo that. Reduce to basic appearance, right? Just gives me those basic. Um, but clear will actually get me clear back to where we were. And actually, I'm gonna just go with this one. All right, let's move on. All right, let's get it done, people. Maybe I will add a little bit of depth to this as well, so this will be exciting. Uh... Oh, is not is this year's max registration form basically a job interview? Oh, shoot, are we asking you too many questions? That's great. That's great feedback, um, Jan Eric. We we have a whole other form for you to fill out to to uh, to talk about that complaint. Guten Tag, yeah, Guten Tag. German is very much very angular, like this. Kia Ora just sounds fun and round. Hey, why not? Searching, searching. There we go. 
Uh, I talk about this a lot too. I use this site. We'll go to um, da -da 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 -da. Word. Word market. We talked about variable fonts. We're now at word market. So right in here, we do hello. And then I get hello uh, in all the fonts on my desktop. Okay. Here's another way to look at all our fonts too, is we can go to Creative Cloud right out here. And sure enough, manage fonts right here. So in here we have sort of just a quick preview. Um, I really wish we could like change this text, but I have not figured out how to do this. But this has all of our active fonts and then we could say, hey, previously active. Uh, you can also, this is killer by the way. Frank, Jan Eric, Froja, everybody, like, especially if you're working for any sort of company, you they have their corporate font you're supposed to use, you could add that font to Creative Cloud. So then when they open up that font, somebody else does, and they don't have that font, it automatically gets synced, so you don't have to actually send it to, to them. So again, that's kind of what you have here. Of course, up at the top, we can browse more fonts, and that's going to jump out to uh, Creative Cloud. The only thing I'm going to show you here real fast and I, I love the tags. Can we talk about tags? I love these tags, right? Can we just say this is awesome? Tags, boom. Oh yeah, beloved. Oh, I already have it installed. Oh yeah, I don't have all of them. I don't have sans regular. Ooh, that's nice. Right, but also the font recommendations is fairly new. So we could find similar fonts to beloved right down here. And uh, so yeah, if you have a favorite font, uh, we have fonts. We have fonts like Beloved, and then good font pairings as well, which I think is awesome. Uh, back to this site. This is wordmark.it, right? And sure enough, we could see hello in all the fonts that I have on my desktop. Not just my Creative Cloud ones, but uh, just the ones that I have installed. Okay, cool. Go back. We know how to get fonts. Kia Ora, super fun. I got a lot of work to do. We need to lock this up big time. I typically use this panel over here. this hey hey I don't know that looks too much like comic sans oh it is comic sans oh do you see what I just did there do you guys see that do you guys catch that man I almost used comic sans and you know what I might because just because it would bother people well that's gonna be a tough one these are gonna be tough that's okay I just used uh, Google Translate for a lot of these. Okay, right here, we'll get a fun font for what's up. <sighs> Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, kind of hard to read for Guten Tag. Okay, the prop, ugh, darn it, so sorry. Ugh, selected, finally. Okay, let's 
get in on this action. Um, that should be in the Budweiser font. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I need to switch that up. I need to switch up Gutentag. This one's going to be more playful, right? Try to pick a playful font. It's just a script font. Not, not anything too crazy, but I do want to, again, give it a little bit more character. I don't know why I use flag a lot, but it just gives it a little bit of character, right? Bonjour, French. What do you guys got for me? Jan Eric, you are you are like really annoyed at the the registration form. Hey, guess what, Jan Eric? It's free. That's the that's the only cost of admission is filling out a form. But I think the fact that you don't want to fill out a form is a, says a lot about you. Like says a lot about me. Like I don't like when people ask me like people try to put you in a box. Like nah, man. But no, it's not Tinder. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Ooh, that was fun. This one. Oh, yeah. Dear Dehut. If you guys are thinking uh, that I do not know how to pronounce these, you would be correct. All right, got it done. Oh yeah, this famous saying, if something's free, then you are the product. We're not selling your name or your list or any of your info, just so you know. I desperately need another coffee. I have 10 minutes, let's do this. Jeez, get my act together. Ah, oh, it's embarrassing. Some of this design work is so bad. And I wanted to do so much more with this, right? There's so much more we could do with this. We could think about, and let me just finish up this design really fast. Okay. Oh, I need a good font for Guten Tag, and this is the last one we'll do. Okay, we got that. We need to make this fun. There we go, Guten Tag. Okay, let's lock this up. Command Shift H, Command Zero. This is our canvas, which I typically just kind of like avoid, like the plague. Usually don't look at the artboard. But now we need to fit it all within this frame. We need to do this lock up. And this is gonna be a lot of pushing stuff around, but this is only just one poster that I'm working on. And again, think of this like the opening slide for, um, for, um, for my max session maybe or something. I don't know. I don't know everyone. But we need to lock this up. Uh let me let me let me tell you about this. Tell me about tell me what you think about this uh, you know, General Kenobi or anyone like what if, and this is just a thought, thinking about new technology, and trust me, we're thinking this about this at Adobe, like I don't want any of these to overlap. So what if these had some physical properties? So when I pushed this text over, it would stop because it would hit the, the, the word hello. So what if these virtual objects had like physical properties to where they could, you know, move around and fall on each other and things like that. It's just like something to think about because honestly, I need that right now for this project. You know, wouldn't that be awesome is what I'm saying. Hola, hello, hey. What's up? 
uh, 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 uh. Okay, now what I'm thinking is I need to split these onto two different layers. Some will be black, some of them won't. Let's just do it. Oh, this one I missed. Yeah, that'll make you want to play bowling with the words. That would be fun. But man, I could certainly use that right about now. Save me so much time. <sighs> Little envelope bending. There we go. Just going to make those wrap like so. Let's increase the size of this one. And here's our poster as it stands right now, and uh, let's play with this some more. Oh, I have hay in here twice. I need another word for hay. Um, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know. I have hello in there twice. Yo. Let's do yo. All right, you guys get the idea. I feel like I haven't been doing much word art. Now I have five minutes. So what that means is I'm going to start an entirely new project because that's what I do. That's what I do. I don't know. I wanted to just take something big, right? There's a couple different things we could do to this. Uh, hello, Izahim. Good to have you here. Akaru and Yoshiko. Uh, 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 yeah, let's take these two. Yeah, let's outline them with black. Make that a little thicker. Yeah, let's blend them together. Why? Because we can. Boom. Shabam. Take that in. Let's take a second look at this. Oh, by the way, I want to give this a little bit of an angle too. All right, let me let me do a lot to this really fast. Specified steps. Let's do eight, something like that. Let's reverse it. Uh, reverse front to back. There we go. Uh, I've decided I want to do a lot to this. So this one, actually, I want this one to be yellow. And this one back here to be the pink, right? And actually, I'll probably make them all different colors. Uh, I could also start to angle these. So let's jump in here. Let's see if I could do this. Go to Effect 3D. And we just want to do like a 3D uh, rotate. Okay, so... This gives me the ability to just give this a nice angle, right? Without really making it, um, giving it any depth in a 3D space. So I kind of want to do something like that. Okay, so that's done. Click OK. Come down here to this one, selecting it. We'll do the same thing. Apply rotate, right? Just kind of gives it some life, something like that. Uh, for all of these, I would really like to change all of the color and the font, to be honest with you. The font needs work. But let's move this over. We'll have a copy of this off to the side. I know I need to change the font. I actually need to break this apart. So again, what are we doing? We're blending this and we'll expand it out. All right there we have it. Let's see if we could do this. Ungroup. All of this, uh, create outlines, exp 
expand effects, expand appearance, ungroup, release clipping masks. There we go. Ah, oh, down to my last minute. I don't quite have time. Oh. All right, let's do it anyways. Let's take all these colors and just see what happens. Random swatches fill. So I knew this would take a little bit of time. I have those uh, additional clipping masks in there that I need to clean up. But that's what you can see where this is headed, right? Ultimately, I'm going to uh, colorize everything and it's going to look amazing. So uh, give me some time to do that. As you can see, um, it needs some more time on this and you guys get the idea. I still got to break all of this up. So all of this needs to be like ungrouped and all that. So you guys get the idea. That's where I'm going to end. I have more time to do that. So give me, give me some time. Uh, that's just the grazing the surface when it comes to <sighs> fonts, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, a lot more I need to do, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment. It's all about manipulating type and, uh, you know, hopefully everybody will have a good day. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.